because now you have the points, the main points and the sub points. Actually, you already have a gospel presentation. No? So all, uh, all, of course, it's, it would be best if there are stories. So there will be stories in each point. So the first story will be the friends give story for grace, the egg story for man, Garcia story for God, the record book of sin story for Christ, and then the boat story for faith. Okay. So five stories. So we will actually uh, add those stories there. Huh? So eventually you will have that actually. <laughs> And then you have something to show. Okay, anyway. So, with the story. So, the, the, the friends give story first. And then the egg story. The Garcia story. The record book of sin story. And the boat story. Okay, so we'll begin with the friends give story. Okay? So, that's the friends give story. Suppose my best friend, can we read that together? Ready, go. Suppose my best friend surprised me with an expensive car. If I immediately dug into my pocket for a couple of dollars to have to pay for it, what an insult that would be. Gifts are free, and if a dollar is paid, it's no longer a gift. And in the same way, we can earn eternal life by paying for it, because God gives it to us for free. So that's actually the friends give story okay so all you need to do is to say grace eternal life is a free gift let me tell you a story suppose my friend will okay so you just do that so it will help actually enhance your presentation that it's not a you know free gifts are given free no? if you work for it it's no longer a gift eternal life is a free gift we can't earn it because it's a gift so that's the story Okay, so it's not a difficult story. Yeah, yeah. What is important is, you know, uh, your friend is giving you a gift, yeah. and gifts are given freely. So if you pay even a dollar and say, can I help pay for this? First, that will be insulting for your friend, yeah. because gifts are given freely. Yeah. Secondly, when you pay something, it's no longer a gift, because you paid for it. Gifts are given freely. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, God gi gives us eternal life for free. So... That's why we can't earn it, because it's a gift from God. Amen. Okay, so eternal life, let, let's go to the five points again, because we may <laughs> be able to remember the story, and then we forgot the uh, words. Huh? Grace, there you go. Grace, Grace eternal is life is a free gift, gift. we yeah. can't earn it. Man, there is a worldwide problem, we can solve it. God, God is loving, but God is also just. Christ, Christ is both God and man. He died on the cross, he rose from the dead, he paid the penalty for our sins. Faith, faith is not just head belief, faith is trusting in Christ alone for eternal life. Okay, let's work on the faith section, ready, go. Faith, faith is not just head belief, faith is trusting in Christ alone for eternal life. Okay, and then you have the story. Okay, now, the next story actually for man is the egg story. Okay, so you have the gift story. And then for, that's for grace. And then you the egg story for man. What is the egg story? Let's read it together. Ready, go. What if I were to make you an omelette? I take out six eggs. I break open the first five, and they are fine. But when I open the six egg, oh, it's smelly, green, and very rotten. Would you want to eat the omelette, even though the five of the six are fine? And in the same way, although much of our lives are fine, even a little bit of sin makes our lives unacceptable to God. Why? Because God's standard is perfection. And the Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Later, we will add the Bible verse. But this time, just a story. Man, no, so grace, eternal life is a free gift. We can earn it. Man, there is a worldwide problem, which is actually sin. So we cannot solve the problem. That's why later, we see God solving the problem in the person of Jesus Christ. So this is an egg story, very good story actually, because some people, they thought they are good enough to earn their way to heaven. But God's standard is perfection. And if we, and all of us have fallen short of that standard. So you have six eggs, good eggs, one is rotten, but you will not eat it, no, because of the rotten egg. Now just be careful if you're in Patero's area, because they eat rotten eggs, okay? So one, one uh, option is, a glass of water with a drop of poison. 
Say, here is a glass of water. The water had been filtered one million times. You know, you have 12 processes or like how many processes, right? Even though it's filtered 100 processes, but just a drop of poison, you will no longer, you know, uh, drink of it because it's no longer acceptable. It's no longer safe. In the same way, we may be very good enough. We, you know, uh, maybe say, we would say we have not killed people. We have, so again, you can even expand. But one little sin makes us unacceptable to God because God's standard is perfection. The, uh, the Bible says, in fact, Jesus said, be perfect, therefore, as you, and, uh, your heaven, my, the heavenly Father is perfect. So the scripture says that. And for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. Okay, so I would like you to look at this story because, again, uh, this is a good story because people thought they can be good enough to earn their way to heaven. But this is very clear. One drop of sin, I mean one drop of poison or one rotten egg will ruin the whole thing. Or a basket of tomatoes. One rotten tomato will ruin eventually all, the, all of the tomatoes in the basket. Okay? So, can you... Okay? So, the boat story. Suppose you're out in the ocean in a small boat. It's a beautiful day in a big month. Once on the shore. Somehow my boat springs a leak and sinks. All of a sudden, I find myself miles from shore keeping afloat only with the help of a piece of wood from the boat. No matter how hard I try, the distance is too far for me to swim. I tread water as long as I can, but by my own efforts, I cannot get to shore. Suddenly, a boat appears alongside of me. The captain of the boat sees my problem and throws me a life preserver. I have to make a decision. Do I let go of the piece of wood and grab the life preserver? Or do I just continue holding on to the piece of wood and keep trying to swim to shore by my own efforts? What's the only reasonable thing for me to do? That's right. I let go of the wood and grab the life preserver. In the same way, I was doing the best I can. Holding on to things I thought would get me alive. I was not hurting anyone, but I could make it to the own efforts any more than I could hope to swim to shore. God the Captain has taught us his life preserver, Jesus Christ. And dropping into him is the only way we can receive eternal life. We must trust in him. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So that's the faith, uh, the, the boat story for the faith section. So what are the components? It was a beautiful day, and then you were riding your small boat, and then suddenly... There, there was a leak in your boat and you began to sink. And what happened is, you were just holding on, left holding on to a piece of wood to keep you afloat. Because your small boat sank already. And then, what happened? You're struggling to swim to the shore, holding on to the piece of wood. And then, uh, suddenly there was a boat and the captain saw your problem. And the captain throws you the, the salvavida, the life preserver. And so, what do you need to do now? Keep on holding to the piece of wood to keep you afloat? Or transfer, you know, let go of the piece of wood and then transfer holding on to the life preserver? What is the logical thing to do? Let go of the piece of wood and then drop to the life preserver. So, which is actually representing Jesus Christ. In the same way, so you, you, can, now, you can now relate, no? So, we can, we can trust our own efforts the good works actually represent your good work. Uh, the wood represents your good works that you have been trusting. But, you know, it's not enough. We have to transfer our faith from the good works that we have done to what Jesus Christ has done on the cross for us. So are you following? So just, just paint a picture. You're riding a small boat. It was nice, sunny day. But there comes a leak in your boat. And then it sinks. And then you're just holding on to the piece of wood which actually represents your good works. And then here comes the captain. There, there was a boat, you now suddenly, and there was the captain. God saw, saw your problem and throws you the life preserver, you know, Jesus, representing Jesus Christ. So what, what should you do? Keep holding on to the piece of wood representing your good works or transfer your trust from the good works you have done to what Christ has done on the cross for you? What is the logical thing to do, of course, to transfer? 
No? And then you, 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 you can use actually the scripture verse there. No? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for me. So we will actually add the verses later. But uh, because it's actually connected. No? So here you can just connect that. Okay? Now uh, we'll do uh, the Garcia story for God. Okay? So th this is the story. Let's all read together. Ready, go. Suppose there was a man named Garcia who lived in a country ruled by a dictator. He was the leader of a group of people who were trying to overcome the dictator. They kept their families with them. One night, Garcia's lieutenant came and told him that somebody had broken into the supply tent and had stolen some food. Garcia was outraged because food was in short supply and had to be rationed. He told all the families from then on, anyone caught stealing food will be publicly whipped. Not at all that, the Garcia's lieutenant told him that more food had been stolen. Not only had been in thought, but it was also his own mother. Talk about a predicament. If Garcia whipped his elderly mother, she would probably die. But if he did not punish her, he would lose the authority and respect of everyone as their leader. As everyone assembled in the tent, word word passed quickly about Garcia's mother. And everyone wondered what he would do. Garcia pronounced the crime and the punishment, and he did something that shocked everyone. He removed the shirt from his own back and ordered his lieutenant to whip him instead of his mother. You see, only in this way was Garcia's justice upheld, but at the same time, his love for his mother was proven. The penalty was paid, but it was paid by Garcia himself. A very powerful story. The first time I heard this story, I was just crying and and just amazed of what Christ did for us. No? So what's the story again? So there was a dictator named Garcia, and then people were with him, and one day his lieutenant came to him and said, food had been stolen. And so he was very angry because food is limited and has to be rationed. So he called all the people and he said, from now on, anyone caught stealing food will be publicly whipped. And then later, the lieutenant came to him again, and said more food had been stolen, that's the good news. I mean the, the bad news, but the good news is the thief was, stolen, uh, was caught. The problem is it's your mother. So it's, a, it's really a problem for Garcia. If he will whip his elderly mother, she will probably die. But if she will not punish her, he, he will lose the respect of the people. So everyone assembled outside the tent and they were waiting for the decision of Garcia. So what happened? Garcia pronounced the crime, and he said, this is the punishment. And then everybody was shocked when he took his shirt, and then he ordered his lieutenant to whip him instead of his mother. So Garcia's justice was satisfied, but he had also proven his love for his mother by taking the punishment upon himself. So we're supposed to be punished, like, you know, like the mother, but Garcia, you know, uh, you know, took, took the punishment. Christ took the punishment that we are supposed to to have. You know, so that's that's basically the story. So we can relate God's justice and at the same time what Christ, you know, God's love and what Christ has done for us. Okay, can can you try to work on this story? Yes. Huh? Okay, so you try try to work on it. Okay, uh, what is critical here is, you know, you can say in the same way, we are like Garcia's mother and Garcia is like God. You know? So in a similar act, God showed his love for us and upheld his own justice, standard of justice. And of course, how did we do this that will relate us to, uh, connect us to Christ? Okay, so one more story, the record book of sin story. So you need to have something like a book. Okay, not your Bible, but uh, anyway, you can you can use uh, your your Bible, but it's good to really have a book. So you have a record book, right? Yes. <laughs> so you can say here. Let's imagine this book contains every sin I have ever committed. Okay. So it, it's record book of sin. So it's a record of your sin. No. So let's imagine this book contains every sin I have ever, commit, I have ever committed. Its page will. Uh, details the scene of a particular day. 
So what are the sins? Every bad word I've ever spoken, every dirty thought that ever crossed my mind, every wrong deed I've ever done. It's all recorded here. So here then is the problem, my sin. So let this book uh, represent sin. So place it on your left hand, and then you can say, God loves me, but he hates my sin. Are you following? So let this book represent uh, myself. So this, this book contains every sin I've ever committed uh, from day one to from birth to death. It, it records ev every bad word I've ever spoken, every dirty thought that ever crossed my mind, every wrong deed I've ever done. It's all recorded in the book. Okay, so let this book represent my sin. And this, my hand represents myself. And then this one representing God. So God loves me, but he hates my sin. He doesn't want to punish me, but he must punish sin. Okay, so it, it says there. And then, uh, there have been times in my life no, that I would like to solve this problem. So what do you do? You try to turn your life around. You know, you, you make new resolution. You know, you, you, you want to, to solve it. Sometimes you might... Uh, you may, you may even try to turn a new leaf in your life. But the problem is still there. Your sin. And what happens is, oftentimes, you get farther and farther away from God. Because you continue to commit sin. No? And then, that's the problem. So, in the person of Jesus Christ, God solved this problem. He sent His Son into the world. The scripture says, we all like sheep have gone astray. It's of us has turned his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him all of my sins. So all of my sins that God hates has now been placed on Jesus Christ, his son. So Jesus died on the cross, he was buried, but on the third day he rose again from the dead, and he's in heaven now, offering us the free gift of eternal life. So now we can be free to have a personal relationship with him. So it's, it's a powerful uh, illustration actually. Especially when you say, but God solved this problem in the person of Jesus Christ. God did what we, we cannot do. We cannot, you have, how matter you have, you, you try to turn your lip around, you know, make your resolution, but sin is always there. And if you get farther and farther away from Him. So God did what we cannot do. He sent His Son into the world. And then the scripture says, We all like sheep have gone and say, It's about to turn its own way. And the Lord that laid on Him all of our sins. All of our sins which God hates has now been placed on His beloved Son. Jesus died on the cross and paid for, for our sins. He was buried. And on the third day, He rose again from the dead. And He's in heaven now offering us the free gift of eternal life. So now we can be free to have a relationship with Him. So no longer is sin there in between. And by the way, there are always... Uh, the, the, the problem here is eye contact. You need to always look at the object. You cannot say, but God, you know, solved this problem by sending His Son, Jesus Christ. Because wherever you look, they will also look there, right? But when you look at here, then they, they will follow you. Okay? And then another problem is, He died, He was buried. But on the third day, He rose again from the dead. No, don't bring the sin anymore. You, you, you know, you just leave it there. And then now we can be free. And, uh, so these are some, some things you need to consider. Always look at the object when you when you do the story, and then uh, <laughs> yeah, and then leave the sin uh, buried there. Okay? Can you practice this? Yes. Yes. Uh, so just uh, let's just read it together, no? So we can actually understand again. So let's imagine. Ready? Go. Let's imagine this book contains every sin I've ever committed. Each page will detail the sin of a particular day, every bad word I've ever spoken. Every, every thought that ever crossed my mind, every wrong deed I have ever done. Here then is the problem, my sin. Okay, and then, and then it says, God loves me. God loves me, but hates my sin. No, he doesn't want to punish me, but must punish sin. My sin has made a separation between me and God. Okay, there were times when I tried to take care of the problem. I would try to turn and alive around. Sometimes I, I might try to turn over a new leaf, but, but the, the problem, problem is still there. there. No, no matter how hard I try, I'll do enough to, to, to turn alive. 
In fact, if anything, I only seems that I get farther and farther away from Him. Okay? This God did what I couldn't do. He sent His Son into the world. The scripture, or the, the Bible says, we all like sheep have gone astray, each of us has turned his own way, and the Lord that laid on him, sin of us all. Okay, and then? All my sin has been. All have been seen, have been placed on his beloved son. When Christ has paid for the last sin, he said, it is finished. After dying on the cross, yep. Yeah, and then he, he was buried and remained in the grave for three days. Then he rose from the dead and went to heaven to prepare a place for you and me. And he offers heaven and eternal life to you and me as a gift. And now I am free to have a personal relationship with God. Okay? Yeah, that's the transition to faith. Okay? So that's actually the story. Can we practice it? The basic comp uh, components, you say, let this book represent my sin. Okay? It records all of the sins that I have committed. Every bad word I've ever spoken, every dirty thought that ever crossed my mind, every wrong deed I've ever done, it's all recorded in the book. So let this represent my sin, let my hand represent myself, and my right hand representing God. So God loves me, but He hates my sin. He doesn't want to punish me, but He must punish sin. So, and then put this back there. And then look at here. My sin has made a separation between me and God. There are times in my life that I would try to solve the problem. I will turn my life around. I will, you know, so a new leap in my life, make new resolution. But the problem is still there. No matter how hard I try, you know, I cannot solve the problem. In fact, what happens is I get farther and farther away from Him. In the person of Jesus Christ, God did what I couldn't do. He sent His Son into the world. The scripture says, or the Bible says, all we have sheep, a sheep of God say, each of us has turned His own, each of us has turned His own way, and the Lord that laid on Him all of our sins. So all of my sins which God hates has now been placed on His beloved Son. Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins. He died, He was buried, but on the third day He rose again from the dead, and He's in heaven now offering us heaven, in eternal life, a free, a free gift. So now we can be free to have a relationship with Him. So something like that, okay? It's a, it's a wonderful story, actually. Uh, and even that alone, that story alone, you can expand and share the gospel. So the, the, the good thing here is you can be very flexible because uh, the approach is very conversational. So the boat story, that alone, you can use that, expand that and share the gospel. No? So the boat, the Garcia story, the... The, the, the stories can actually stand by itself also. But put it together, it's very powerful. Okay? So we'll, we'll try to work on this this afternoon and then uh, see how uh, we, can, we can integrate the whole thing. Okay? And then once we, we're able to do that, then whatever tool, you use the basketball, you talk about the sinful lesson man, then you can, you can even expand because you have verses, you have a story to tell, right? You talk about God, His justice, then you can, so you can use this source interchange, you can work it, you can, uh, because I, I really believe that in, what, in, in different situations, it will call for a different story. It will call for a different approach. No? So it's good to know different ways to be able to.